Hello everyone, welcome to Primetime Recaps. Today, I'm going to be explaining a movie titled Waterworld, released in the year 1995. As the movie begins, we see a world where the liquidizing of polar ice has led to all continents becoming submersed in water, compelling humans to adapt to their new environment. They now live in rugged floating communities, known as atolls, feeding on seafood and living off of trades, plants dirt and soil are even more expensive than gold. People also use their urine for cultivation, due to lack of fresh water. In order words, this movie was the inspiration for Burning Man. Though, the world is turned into an endless giant ocean, many believe in the existence of dry land. Somewhere, different groups of people are looking for the said magical place, hoping to live a better life, but no one has been successful in the search. In the next scene, we're introduced to a man named Mariner, who lives in a disorder boat that appears to be made of scrap. The boy, Costner, loves showing off his ass in the 90s, he is seen urinating in a small vessel, and afterwards, pours the urine into a machine that converts it into drinkable water. In the boat, he has planted a lime tree, a scarce commodity in the world with no land. Mariner does fishing and collects reusable trash from the ocean in order to survive. One afternoon, after a dive, he notices another boat approaching him, the man on the other boat, informs Mariner about an idol, or he obtained various supplies, and he wants to trade them. As soon as Mariner learns that the man wants nothing in return, he starts doubting him. Soon after, he realizes that the man has stolen all of his limes. Meanwhile, a group of smokers arrives in their jet skis and starts attacking them. Although, the Mariner's boat is made up of scrap, it is swift and he is able to escape, whereas, the other man is captured by the smokers. Afterwards, the Mariner arrives at the atoll, a floating city, surrounded by high metal walls. At the gate, he tells them that he's there to trade his belongings. On getting inside, he reveals that he has some genuine dirt to trade, which is very rare. Seeing this, the people of the atoll gives him 124 chits in exchange for a jar of dirt. Later on, he then uses the same chits to buy a tomato plant that is full of dirt and some other scraps from a woman named Helen. Afterwards, as he is returning to his boat, a family approaches him and asks that he impregnates their daughter, but he refuses to do so. Refusing a woman makes them think he's nuts, so they ordered the locals to stop him. After he is captured, the locals discover that the mariner is a mutant, with gills behind his ears and web feed. The mariner attempts to fight back, but he is captured under a fishing net. Later that night, Helen meets with an elderly man named Gregor, and frames as to when they can dip art for dry land. Gregor notifies her that the direction for the dry land is tattooed on the back of a little girl named Enola, but he does not seem to comprehend it. Gregor then considers to ask Mariner about it, who is imprisoned inside a cage. Afterwards, he approaches Mariner and inquires about the mutation, but Mariner appears to be dismissive of him. As soon as Gregor shows the picture of the tattoo, Mariner seems to have interest, but in exchange for the information, Mariner wants him to open the cage. Unfortunately, Gregor is not allowed to do so. The following day, the local people decide to drown Mariner in the swamp by lowering his cage. To his good fortune, an army of smokers led by Deacon arrives to attack the atoll, they're also in search of the mythical dry land, and want to get the little girl who holds the secret to its path. Soonest, the smokers encircle the atoll and start shooting with large machine guns, killing so many atoll residents. At last, the smokers with the jet skis entered the building through self-built ramps. While inside, Gregor fills the balloon and unintentionally flies away, leaving behind Helen and Enola. Meanwhile, Mariner attempts to break free, but his cage collapses, causing it to shrink. Slowly, Helen notices this and rushes to help him, she agrees to assist him only if he takes her and Enola along, and he concurs. Immediately, he tells the girls to open the gate until he starts his boat. Unfortunately, the gate becomes stuck, so Mariner uses the ship's rigging to fly up and open the gate, he then jumps back to the boat. Enola and Helen also board the boat and make their way out of Atoll. Meanwhile, the smoker with machine guns continues firing in an undetermined direction, causing their leader, Deacon's boat to explode. However, Deacon dives into the sea at that exact moment, saving his life after the battle. The smokers continue searching for Enola, having been told that she is the tattoo of the way to the dry land, they bind one of the locals and inquire about Enola. 
Frightened, the man reveals everything he knows, but he is killed eventually. As they sail away, Helen inquires from Mariner if he knows how to get to the dry land, to which he responds in the affirmative. Although, he advises that she throws Enola away before going there, because they have limited food and water. Helen tries to convince him not to do so, she even offers herself in place of the little girl's life, but Mariner dismisses her. Unknown to her, men with gills and webbed feet are asexual. Afterwards, as Mariner notices Enola drawing on his boat, it irritates him, and he throws her into the water. Helen panics, knowing that Enola can't swim, so she dives in to save her. Mariner appears to abandon the two in the water, but he later returns to pick them up. Immediately they get on the boat, the smokers arrive on a plane and start shooting at them. While Mariner goes down to retrieve his weapon, Helen rushes towards the large spear gun and shoots at them, without the permission of Mariner, and as a result of this, the plane gets tethered to the boat by the metal rope, and it begins circling and tangling in the web. When Mariner notices this, he rushes up to cut the rope and untangle the boat, while the smokers do the same. Few minutes later, the smokers are able to shoot the rope and fly away, whereas Mariner swings off and lands in the water. He is enraged at Helen for destroying the boat, so he cuts both Helen and Enola's hair as punishment. Surprisingly, Deacon guesses their location and deploys his men to find Enola, while sailing, they come across a drifter who admits to having some important papers, and offers to trade them in exchange for Helen. Helen refuses, but Mariner agrees, and the drifter takes Helen into his boat, while Mariner quickly examines the paper, and discovers that it is useless. He swiftly rushes into the drifter's boat, and cancels the deal. This rages the drifter, as he claims that he has a zero return policy, and tries to stab Mariner. They start fighting and Mariner kills the drifter. In the next scene, Mariner displays how he fishes, he dives into the water as bait, and soon, a massive mutated fish appears. He then uses his weapon to slay the fish, and prepares food for everyone. Mariner appears to be nice to them now, seeing that he was rude at first. He starts conversing with Enola, and allows her draw with a colored pencil, he also teaches her how to swim. Helen appears concerned as she witnesses their bond growing stronger. After a while, they come across the barter outpost, and notices some men waving at them. Mariner is suspicious, so he looks beneath the water and discovers the smokers waiting for them. He immediately turns the boat around in order to run away, but the smokers chase them, they somehow managed to avoid the attacks of the smokers' burner, then deploys the extra sails as parachutes, allowing them to flee faster. As soon as they are safe, Mariner forces Helen to reveal the truth about Enola's tattoo, she discloses that the tattoo is the path to dry land. When Mariner hears this, he claims that dry land is a mess, but she doesn't believe him. As a result of that, he decides to show her, as he places Helen inside a large bubble and submerges her, he can breathe through his gills, so he takes her deep into the ocean and shows her the past world, which is completely covered in water, and she is astonished. Meanwhile, Enola is waiting for them in the boat, but as soon as she notices something in the water, she quickly hides. When Mariner and Helen swim to the surface, they discover that they have been apprehended by the smokers. Deacon compels them into telling him about Enola, but they both remain silent. Deacon then shoots at the air, pretending to kill them and as a result, Enola comes up being concerned, and she is quickly captured by the smokers. Deacon orders his men to kill Mariner and Helen, but the two escape by diving into the water. Helen says she can't hold her breath that long, and Mariner tells her that he'll breathe for her, by putting his mouth very close to hers. After some time, they return to the surface and discovers that their boat has been destroyed. Meanwhile, Deacon pretends to be nice to Enola and inquires about the tattoo behind her back, but she remains quiet. He then offers her some colored pencils and asks her again, but she doesn't say anything. Back on the destroyed boat, Mariner and Helen are hopeless, Helen inquires as to why he didn't accept her when she offered herself, and he responds by saying that, he felt she didn't like him then. His reply makes her emotional, and she kisses him, before they both make love on the boat, because there's no turn on like knowing that your surrogate daughter has been kidnapped. The next day, Mariner attempts to repair the boat but they discover Gregor hot air balloon, who seems happy. Gregor then takes them to the boat, where the survivors of Atoll are staying. Later that night, they talk about going on the search for dry land, but the people aren't ready to look for Enola, because it's dangerous to face the smokers. Mariner then decides to go on his own, in search of the little girl. 
Afterwards, he arrives at the smoker's ship and enters it, killing the smokers one after another, in a swift way. Meanwhile, Deacon gathers the smokers and lies to them, claiming to have discovered the way to dry land, he orders everyone to begin rowing, thereby propelling the ship forward. As the men begin to row, Mariner approaches Deacon alone, and asks that he free Zanola. When Deacon refuses, Mariner threatens to drop the flame into the oil reserve, which will cause the entire ship to explode, but Deacon doesn't believe he will act irrationally, but Mariner shows how serious he by dropping the flame, causing a massive explosion. Deacon then flees with the little girl, before Mariner reaches the top at the podium and notices him on the plane, he immediately fires a spear gun at the ship's fence and zip lines down. Subsequently, he uses the metal rope to create a barrier causing the plane to crash before taking off. Luckily, Enola is unharmed and the two of them embrace, however, the ship begins to break down, leaving them with no means of escape. Fortunately, Helen, Gregor and Atoll residents arrives, before the ship breaks down, they drop the rope and pull Mariner and Enola up, but Deacon grabs the rope and climbs up as well. As Helen notices this, she throws a heavy object at him and Enola kicks him, causing him to fall into the ocean. Mariner and Helen make it to the hot air balloon, but a persistent Deacon jumps on a jet ski and shoot at the hot air balloon, causing Enola to fall into the water. Deacon commands his men to capture Elena, but Mariner quickly responds by grabbing the rope and ties it around his leg, before jumping from the hot air balloon. He proficiently grabs Enola, as the rope becomes a bungee cord, and he springs up at the right time, causing the jet skis to collide and eventually explode. They reach the hot air balloon safely, but this time, Gregor is able to understand Enola's tattoo and they head in the direction of dry land. After some days, they spot a bird on their hot air balloon, when they look further, they are stunned to see land for the first time in their lives. They are filled with joy to finally be there, and they start exploring the area. After a while, they see a small hut and enter it, then they notice a couple bones lying together, they also discover the map drawing, which looks like the one on Enola's back. It also shows that it's owned by Enola's family, her family appears to have sent her away, hoping that she will bring more people to dry land. In the end, Mariner finds the land to be uncomfortable for him, and just by looking at him, one can tell. He feels that he belongs in the sea, so he approaches Enola and informs her that he is leaving. This saddens her, as he adds that he isn't born for dry land. Although, she tries to assure him that he will adapt, but still this doesn't change his mind. Before leaving, he bids Enola and Helen one final goodbye. The movie ends as Helen and Enola realizes that they're on the summit of Mount Everest as they watch Mariner sailing away from the cliff. I hope you liked the movie, please turn on the bell icon to be the first to watch our videos when we post contents like this. You can also suggest a movie you'll love us to explain in the comments section. Thanks for watching.